Hi there, Emily Gibbons, and let's talk a little bit about word lists. Now, you might be thinking, oh, you know, this is just like one of those tools that I use when um, I'm kicking off a new um, Orton-Gillingham lesson, I'm teaching a new concept or something, but I want to dig in a little bit deeper. Now, before I do, I just want to invite you to please subscribe to the Literacy Nest YouTube channel. Have you subscribed yet? If you haven't, click that subscribe button so that you can be notified of all of the new videos that come out. I usually have about one new video a week. All right, so back to the discussion of word lists. So word lists at the heart are really like our, one of our scaffolded tools. They're one of our tools that we are providing to scaffold and practice a lot of different things. One of them being in the intervention setting to work on our decoding skills and practicing at the word reading level. But why, what are they and why do we use them? And if you are sort of new to the idea of using word lists, then I just want to kind of share a few ideas about that. So first of all, the words that we choose in the word list are ones that we want to teach explicitly, not only for decoding, but also for encoding. And the words we choose are either going to be new words or review. The words that we choose for the lesson are either going to be listed on a single page, like this one right here, um, or you can put them into a grid, you can have them in decks of cards, you can put them into a notebook or a binder so that you have a whole collection of them to refer back to. Some misconceptions about word lists. When people think about practicing at the word reading level, they think that this is simply just phonics practice and that it's only for decoding, uh, that we have to actually use it for a time to be for speed, but accuracy doesn't mean fast reading. Okay, certainly we want them to become more automatic, but accuracy trumps that. And we sometimes see it as sort of one of these rote or memorization tasks, instead of using this tool as a chance to open up some language instruction. So what we want to do with our word list is think of an onion. We want to peel back the layers. Now don't worry, your word list isn't going to be as smelly as an onion, right? But we have to peel back those layers. And don't worry, it's not going to make you cry like an onion does. Okay, so first we want to ask ourselves some questions with any lesson. What are the most essential concepts? So if I have suffix ed, I'm not just going to teach it for that phonology. I am going to use that as a chance to expand knowledge of morphology. That when suffix ed is added, that is changing the tense from present to past. I want to ask myself, how can I extend language learning within a single list? So I'm not just going to practice having students reading words across. I'll infuse other activities like questioning or things that um, we talk about particular grammar skills, things like that. I want to see if my students can pick up on patterns in language. And so by having them box that base and underlining that verb, and then, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to make this a little bit larger, but then also having them highlight the last letter in the base, that is getting them to recognize that there is a pattern when we're using suffix ed in this way and the ed has that pronunciation of that kind of schwad ed like rented 
then we notice that the base has letters ending either in a T, a bunch of them of T, or D. And so that may be a pattern that students pick up on within that word list. A few more questions to ask. What skills can be woven in seamlessly? So I'm going to address the, the present and past tense grammar skill within the context of this suffix ed lesson. And how can I elevate this lesson? That means just how can I extend their learning? So this is what I mean by peeling back those layers and getting you thinking more than just simply a word reading task. It's going to greatly increase your student engagement. It's going to get kids really curious about words. It's going to get them asking you a lot more questions too, which is great because that's getting them thinking about the way our written language works. So if you are loving everything that I'm discussing here about wordless and you want to learn more about elevating that word reading time, I'm going to invite you to the three-day challenge called Beyond the Word List, where we are going to dive deeply into ways to infuse language into your word reading lists. And sure, there's a lot to discuss here, but I'm going to walk you through it in, yes, three simple days. The first video, will be sort of like your training. The second video I'll be modeling so you'll get lots of video examples of me with students. And then the third day you'll get materials to be able to create some of the activities that I've explained. So I will have the link to this three day challenge in the video description and I hope that you enjoy it and find it really enlightening. So I will see you next time, but thanks for watching.